We're trying to test whether a new low-fat diet actually helps obese people lose weight. 100 randomly assigned people are assigned to group 1 and put on the low-fat diet. Another 100 randomly assigned obese people are assigned to group 2 and put on, the di on a diet of approximately the same amount of food, but not as low in fat. So group 2 is the control, just the no diet. Group 1 is the low fat group, to so see if it actually works. After four months, the mean weight loss was 9.31 pounds for group 1. So let me write this down. The mean weight loss for group 1, let me make it very clear. So the low fat, the low fat group, the mean weight loss, the mean weight loss was 9.31 pounds. So our sample mean for group 1 is 9.31 pounds with a sample standard deviation of 4.67. And both of these are obviously very easy to calculate from the actual data. And then for our control group, for our control, for our control, the sample mean and 7.40 pounds for group two. So our sample mean here for the control is 7.40 with a sample standard deviation sample standard deviation of 4.04 pounds. And now if we just look at it superficially, it looks like the low fat group lost more weight than just based on our samples than the control group. In fact, if we take the difference of them. So if we take the difference of the low fat group from or between the low fat group and the control group, we get what is it? It's 9.31 9.31 minus 7.40 minus 7.40 is equal to, now let's get the calculator out. So then we have 9.31 minus 7.4. So it's 1.91. So it's 1.91. So the difference of our samples is 1.91. So just based on what we see, it says, hey, maybe maybe you lose an incremental 1.91 pounds every four months if you are on this diet. And what we want to do in this video is is to get a 95% confidence interval around this number to see that is is you know are all that in that 95% confidence interval maybe do we always lose weight and or are is there a chance that we can actually go the other way with the low fat diet so really just this video 95% confidence interval and in the next video we'll actually do a hypothesis test using this same data and now to do a 95% confidence interval let's think about the distribution that we're thinking about so let's look at the distribution of course we're going to think about the distribution that we're thinking about we want to think about the the distribution of the difference of the means. So it's going to have some true mean here. It's going to have some true mean over here, which is it's going to have some true mean, which is the mean of the difference of the sample means. Actually, let me write that. It's not a y, it's an x1 and x2. So it's the sample mean of x1 minus the sample mean of x2 and then this distribution right here is going to have it's going to have some standard deviation it's going to have some standard deviation so it's the standard deviation of the distribution of x of the the mean of 1 of x1 minus the sample mean of x2 it's going to have some standard deviation here and we want to make an inference about this we or I guess the best way to think about it. We want to get a 95% confidence interval based on our sample. We want to create an interval around this where there's a where we are confident that there's a 95% chance that this true mean, the true mean of the differences lies within that interval. And to do that, to do that, let's just think of it the other way. How can we create a 95% confidence how can we create a 95% interval around this around the mean? where we are 95% sure, or construct an interval around this, where we're 95% sure that any sample from this distribution, and this is one of those samples, that we're 95%, that there's a 95% chance that we will select from this region right over here. So we care about a 95% region right over here. So how many standard deviations do we have to go in each direction? And to do that, we just have to look at a z table. And just remember, if we have 95% in the middle right over here, we're going to have 2.5%, 2.5% over here, and we're going to have 2.5% over here. We have to have 5% split between these two symmetric tails. So when we look at a z table, we want we want the critical z value that they give right over here. 
And we have to be careful here. We're not going to look up 95% because the z table gives us the cumulative probability up to that critical z value. So the z table is going to be interpreted like this. So there's going to be some z value right over here where we have 2.5% above it. Two and a half, the, percent, the probability of getting a, a, a more extreme uh, result or a z score above that is 2.5%. And the probability of getting one below that is going to be 97.5%. 97.5%. But if we can find whatever z value this is right over here, it's going to be the same z value as that. Instead of thinking about it in terms of a one-tailed scenario, we're going to think of it in a two-tailed scenario. So let's look up let's look it up for 97.5%. 97.5% on our z table. Let's see. We have 97 right here. This is 0.975 or 97.5. And this gives us a z value of 1.9 6. So this is z is equal to 1.96. Or, or only 2.5% of the results or of the, of the samples from this population are going to be more, more than 1.96 standard deviations away from the mean. So this critical z value right here is 1.96 standard deviations. Or if this is 1.96 times the standard deviation of x1 minus x2. And then this right here is going to be negative 1.96 times the same thing. So let me write that. So this right here, it's symmetric. This distance is going to be the same as that distance. So this is negative 1.96 times the standard deviation of this distribution. And if there's a 95% chance, so let's put it this way. There's, there's a 95% chance. There is a 95% chance that our our mean, or our I guess we could say that our sample that we got from our distribution, this is the sample is a difference of these other samples. There's a 95% chance that 1.91 lies within lies within, or let me just write is within is within. This distance is within 1.96 times the standard deviation of that distribution. So you could view it as a standard error of this, of this statistic. So x1 minus x2. Or we can say that there is a 95, let me finish that sentence. There's a 95% chance that 1.91, which is our, which is the sample statistic, or the statistic that we got, is within 1.96 times the standard deviation of this distribution of, of the mean of the distribution, of the true mean of the distribution. Or we could say it the other way around. There's a 95% chance. There is a 95% chance that the true mean of the distribution, that the true mean of the distribution is within is within 1.96 times the standard deviation of the distribution of 1.91. These are equivalent statements. If I say I'm within 3 feet of you, that's equivalent to saying you're within 3 feet of me. That's all that's saying. But when we construct it this way, it becomes pretty clear how do we, con how do we actually construct the confidence interval. We just have to figure out, we just have to figure out what this distance right over here is. And to figure out what that distance is, we're going to have to figure out what the standard deviation of this distribution is. Well, the standard deviation of the differences of the sample means is going to be equal to, and we saw this in the last video. In fact, I have it, I think I have it right at the bottom here. It's going to be equal to the square root. It's going to be equal to the square root of the variances of each of those distrib of of each of those distributions. Right, because or the variance of this this distribution is going to be equal to the sum. Let me write it over this way, right over here. So the variance. Let me write it right over here. The variance. I'll re re kind of prove it. The variance of the means or the variance of our distribution is going to be equal to the sum of the variances of each of these sampling distributions, of each of these sampling distributions each of these sampling distributions. And we know that the variance of each of these sampling distributions is equal to the variance of this sampling distribution is equal to the variance of 
the population distribution, the variance of the population distribution divided by our sample size, and our sample size in this case is 100, and the variance of this sampling distribution for our control, we'll do this in a new color, for our control is going to be equal to the variance of the population distribution for the control, for the control divided by its sample size. And if, since we don't know what these are, we can approximate them, especially because our n is greater than 30 for both circumstances. We can approximate these with our sample, with our sample, our sample variances for each of these distributions. So let me make this clear. Our sample variances for each of these distributions. So this is going to be our sample variance 1 or actually our sample standard deviation 1 squared, which is the sample variance for that distribution over 100, plus, plus my sample standard deviation for the control squared, which is the sample variance. Standard deviation squared is just the variance divided by 100. And this will give us the variance. This will give us the variance for this for the for this for this distribution. And if we want the standard deviation, if we want the standard deviation, we just take the square roots of both sides. So if we want the squ square root, sorry, if we want the standard deviation of this distribution right here, this is the variance right now, so we just need to take we just need to take the square root. So let's calculate this. We actually know these values. S1 S1, our sample standard deviation for group 1 is 4.67. We wrote it right here as well. It's 4.67 and 4.04. .04. So this is 4.67. 4.67, and this number right here is 4.04. .04. The, S, the S is 4.67. We're going to have to square it. And the S2 is 4.04. .04. We're going to have to square it. So let's calculate that. So we get, so we're going to take the square root of, square root of, 4.67 4.67 squared divided by 100 plus 4.04 .04 squared divided by 100 and then close the parentheses close the parentheses and we get 0.617 so this is equal to let me write it right here this is going to be equal to 0 0.0.617. So if we go back up over here, we calculated the standard deviation of this distribution to be 0 0.617. So now we can actually calculate our interval, because this is going to be 0 0.617. So if you want 1.96 times that, so we get 1.96 times that 0 0.617. I'll just write the, the answer we just got. So we get 1.21. So this is this number right here. This number right here is 1.21. So the 95% confidence interval is going to be is going to be the 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 difference of our means 1.91 plus or minus plus or minus this number 1.21. So what's our confidence interval? If we subtract it so the low end of our confidence interval, and I'm running out of space, the low end, 1.91 minus 1.21 is just, what is that? That's just 0.7. So the low end is 0.7. And then the high end, 1.91 plus 1.21, what is that? That's 2, 2.12, 2.12. Let me just make sure that my brain sometimes doesn't work properly when I'm making these videos. 3.12. Oh, good thing I redid it. 3.12, of course. Yeah, 3.12. So let me. So it is 3.12. So and and just be clear, there's not a 90. There's not a pure 95% chance that the true the true difference of the true means lies in this. We are just confident that there's a 95% chance, and we always have to put that little confidence there because remember, we actually we didn't actually know the population standard deviations or the population variances. We estimated them with our sample. And because of that, we don't know that it's an exact probability. We just have to say we're confident that it's a 95% probability. That, and that's why it's really just we just say it's a confidence interval. It's not a pure probability. 
But it's a pretty neat result. We are now, we have this 95% confidence interval. So we, we're confident that there's a 95% chance that the true m difference of these two samples, and remember, the sample means, the means of the sample, the difference between the, let me make it very clear, the difference between the means of the sample is, or let me put it, the, the sample means, the expected value of the sample means is actually the same thing as the expected value of the populations. And so if you, the, what this is giving us is actually a confidence interval for the true difference between the populations. If you were to give everyone, every possible person diet 1, and every possible person diet 2, this is giving us a confidence interval for the true population means. And so when you look at this, it looks like diet 1 actually does do something. Because in any case, even at the low end of the confidence interval, you still have a greater weight loss than diet 2. Hopefully that doesn't confuse you too much. In the next video, we're actually going to do a hypothesis test with the same data.